Would you believe it? With all of the punishment that consumers have seen in the last two years for car prices going through the roof, truck prices continue to climb. Yes, it's in fact, we're seeing increases by Ford, we're seeing increases by GM, Toyota, and we're seeing big increases by Ram. That's right, Stellantis Group are all cranking up prices on their lot of their pickup trucks. What's going on with these overpriced trucks today? Well, let's talk about that because this is going to hit you hard in the pocketbook. Clearly, with the escalation of interest rates and inflation, nobody needs higher priced vehicles. Nobody needs higher priced anything. But yet, these car manufacturers continue to reach deeper into your pocket every single day for another dollar or two. But it's not all car manufacturers are on the same page. I'm going to make some comparisons as per Wolf Street. They do a great comparison analysis between the cost increases between a Toyota Camry, a popular mid-size sedan, and a Ford F-150. And let's talk about that. Pickup trucks were once just a utility vehicle. But Ford got a hold of the idea that they're the most popular pickup truck in America. Well, they're really riding on those coattails, aren't they? Because as a matter of fact, if we scale back since 1990, we've seen increases of base MSRP of a Toyota Camry up 77%. And yet the Ford F-150 XLT has gone up to 267% since 1990. And since 2020, the new vehicle CPI has averaged about 20.7%, with the average Toyota Camry transaction increase of about 5.8%, equivalent to about $1,450. In the meantime, the Ford F-150 XLT, since 2020, has gone up a whopping $13,460, or the equivalent of 39.4%. It's absolutely ballistic. Now, there comes a time when enough is enough, and you have to say, okay, they're the best-selling pickup truck in North America, but this is getting out of hand and people aren't paying it and sadly and fortunately it's the consumer that have really been a big part of driving these prices up. And then we talk the year over year CPI of new vehicles is about 2.3% whereas a Camry year over year has seen about 1.8% or about $475 on a Camry LE model trim. Meantime the Ford F-150 XLT have, as, have averaged about $4,680 or 10.9% year over year so clearly Ford is astronomically taking off from a lot of even average manufacturers. Toyota Camry's a great selling car as well, but that didn't give Toyota a reason to crank up their prices and take advantage of the consumer. And I can actually attest, I have a 2003 Dodge Ram. We kept it in the family. When that vehicle was purchased brand new, it's a rear wheel drive, but it's a mid-level spec SLT. And it actually, we purchased it for just over $25,000 back in 03 in Canadian funds. But now, as an example of Ford F-150 in 2024, in XLT trim, in the basis of models, we're talking rear wheel drive, we're also talking two doors, actually stickers for about $47,000 and change. Slap on destination PDI charges of $1,995 and we're tapping the back door of 50 grand. And when we compare that to the industry average, we're talking cars, trucks, SUVs, JD Power claims the industry average for transaction prices is about $46,000. Base XLT is more even than the industry average. That is just sad. We can go one step further. Ford's top of the line 4x4 decked right out to the nines. F-Series Crew 4x4 can be found for over $100,000 in today's market. And unfortunately, it's not really a monopoly. We've got Toyota, GM, Stellantis, that's Ram, as well as Ford, all competing for top spot. Nissan is pretty much giving up their ghost on full-size pickup trucks in 2024. So we're basically dealing with those four manufacturers, and they're not really pitching their vehicles on value. If they were, they'd all be very competitive, but they're not. Some of these manufacturers are cranking prices up regardless of what their competition's doing. They're trying to sell the image, the branding, better advertisement, marketing. They're trying to make their vehicle present as something that's maybe better than the other ones, but not so much from a price standpoint, more from a value add or the emotional component that people are getting tied to. Oh, I need to have that so bad because it'll do this and it'll do that. We also can't forget now Rivian and Tesla are stepping into the game with pickup trucks. They're a bit of an acquired taste, but certainly there's extra add-ons within the market. Now, of course, Ford and the Lightning is another conversation with their electrification. They are also going up in price. Unfortunately, we're starting to see increases there too this year. You know, just when we believe Ford was scaling back their production of their F-150 Lightnings, and they were. They said they were going to output about half of the volume that they did the year before, all for the sake of trying to meet the market demands and obviously trying to match the pricing. So lower demands 
let's produce a little fewer and then it still continues to drive that need and that want so there's less vehicles on the on the proverbial car lot makes people gives people that little extra itch if they're actually looking for a lightning they may feel compelled to actually reach out and make that purchase because they feel this urgency because they don't see any vehicles sitting on the lot and while there's two models that are actually going slightly down in price that's the platinum and the platinum black platinum's down from about 90 grand down to about just over 80 just under eighty five thousand dollars where the platinum black is dropping from about 98 to about ninety three thousand dollars so they've shed about five grand off the platinum versions likely because they're just not selling and they're so high priced to begin with people are putting don't want to necessarily gamble on electrification particularly where Ford's invested in and so they're okay in buying the lower cost lightnings and of course go figure Ford decided to crank up the prices on their entry level and lower cost lower price point pickup trucks in the lightning or EV segment for example the pro version is going from about fifty thousand dollars up to a cool 55k then you have the XLT 311a with about 240 mile range it's going from about fifty seven thousand five hundred all the way up to sixty five grand clearly that's the sweet spot that's the car or the truck the lightning truck that people most seek and of course they crank up the prices in that price point and then there's the Lariat that's going up a couple of grand up to about 79,000 so we're basically touching $80,000 for a mid-spec Ford Lightning. All this in the face of insult to injury. We've been paying too much for the last few years. Ford has been one of the most aggressive manufacturers for cranking up the price but the value is starting to run out of steam and people are starting to realize that now. We can also talk about GM. They're moving their prices up and as if you've seen the prices as well for Toyota lately they're also creeping up there and even for a Tacoma you're going to spend a lot of your hard-earned dollars just to get into one of those base Tacomas or TRD versions as well as the Tundra. There's another beautiful Tundra. This one probably had to wait for some time to get this on this car lot good luck in even getting one because if you're talking about a hybrid tundra you're probably gonna have to wait a year and a half to two years anyhow so by that time you'll be just defeated and you'll probably just want to pay the bill so that's also where they sort of beat you down with that weight that weight and then finally it shows up of course we all talk about ram rams really jacking their prices up this year as well so they're clearly all in a place and ram should know better they're not selling vehicles they scaled up during the uaw strike and now they have this excess inventory it doesn't take long to walk down the car lots and see excess amounts of trucks and the lots rows and rows and rows of dodge rams and they're just not selling sure they're selling i mean there's people that are going to argue and say yeah they're selling they're selling but the numbers are down and they have too much inventory in other words too many days on the lot means dollars out of the proverbial pocket for the dealership is not a good scene that's a money waster so yes you can get a brand new ram for about forty two thousand dollars but you can also pay as much as over 90 grand for this new tungsten edition for 2024. we're seeing as much as a fourteen thousand dollar increase on new ram pickup trucks this is getting ridiculous sure you can get in a base two-wheel drive tradesman pickup truck for about 42 43 thousand dollars but who wants that rear wheel drive nobody drives rear wheel drive trucks anymore and you can't even get the extra cab and it's just a base truck with a base engine for forty three thousand dollars and remember that's about the industry average for all car manufacturers suvs cars trucks and and everything in between the bighorn two-wheel drive as well comes at a measly forty seven thousand dollars it comes with a v6 so hardly full-size pickup truck territory then there's a laramie at about 62 grand you got to add a little extra if you want a v8 but where it really gets interesting is where you really want to buy into a truck i mean a true pickup truck north american style comes with a v8 but unfortunately a rebel with a v6 four by four is truly at least what you want to get is price starting at 66 grand meantime the limited four by four is up to about seventy seven thousand dollars now the limited longhorn four by four now is close to 78,000 bucks and this new tungsten edition as I've saying is about 89,000 and change so clearly these prices are going up the car and truck manufacturers just haven't learned their lessons and we still haven't gotten clearly to a point of breaking the camel's back people are still buying these trucks yes sales are down yes there's excess inventory on the lots but people are still paying this full-size overscale pricing on a lot of these manufacturers when are we all going to learn and word has it from an insider that a fully decked out tungsten with a bunch of the accessories and add-ons have actually added and specced for a whopping ninety five thousand dollars folks and remember these are 1500s we're not talking about a diesel with the big gearbox and the pulling power we're talking about half ton pickup trucks these are still relatively light duty pickups and people 
people are paying almost $100,000. Remember yesterday, you can get yourself an AMG Mercedes-Benz for 100K. You can get a fully decked out BMW M3 for 100K. And it wasn't too long ago where cars like a Porsche 911 was for $100,000. So things have changed and certainly inflation is taking a role and an impact, but this is just getting a little bit out of hand. When is all this madness going to end? So while clearly a lot of this has to do with the fact that people are still buying, it's supply and demand. So even though there's a lot of excess supply on the car lots, people are still walking in, still paying full sticker and then some. Sure, there's some incentives. Yes, Ram's offering some incentives. You can get some dollars off MSRP. Even Ford's offering some prices off. Now, what these manufacturers are doing is not necessarily lowering their MSRP, but they're softening up the negotiation. So with certain trucks, you might be able to walk in there and nickel and dime a few bucks off of MSRP, but if you don't ask, you won't get it. So that's kind of where they're at. They're sort of just playing the market, they're ratcheting it up, but because the market's soft right now, there are still opportunities to chisel off a few bucks, maybe get a few throw and add-ons in there. But the bottom line is a lot of people are still paying full sticker and getting it up the schwanz, so that's not a good place to be. So clearly supply and demand is in live and well. And the reality is a lot of these manufacturers like the GM, Ram, Ford, they don't really care. Even if they sell a few less trucks, the ratio or the dollar margin on each one of these vehicles is extremely high. So even if they sell a few less trucks because they've cranked up the base MSRP, the profits are larger. And even with the scaling back of the Lightning, they realize that we're charging higher for the popular versions of the Lightning, that's the mid-level versions, so it doesn't matter if they sell less trucks, they're gonna increase their margins on each unit and they're gonna make their money anyway. They don't have to sell as many units and this is starting to sound like an old song and dance, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly what was happening for the last couple of years. They didn't have to have all the inventory in the car lots. They just needed to sell what they had at a higher margin and that's where we're at today. So unfortunately, truck prices still continue to climb makes it more and more difficult for people. May, every day people just need a pickup truck for work, just to haul their boat around, their trailer, or they just like the convenience of a truck. And these big four manufacturers clearly know that and are taking people for a ride. We're all gonna have to just sort of figure this out. The old supply and demand thing, it all comes down to, is the demand there? Well, that's gonna drive the supply. And of course, pricing will follow suit. So, and it clearly does not appear that pickup truck prices are going to drop anytime soon. Well, you may have some opportunities to possibly negotiate off of sticker, maybe get some add-ons. The bottom line is prices are not dropping anytime soon, particularly on trucks and popular SUVs. If you've had some great opportunities and gotten yourself some great deals from one of these big manufacturers in recent months, because we know what's been going on, the market has softened up a little bit, I'd love to hear your story in the section comment section below. That would really help and inspire others who may be out shopping. And with all that said, be sure to check out that video. A really interesting story about a couple of Canadians. There's actually two documented cases where they had to put a brand new battery in their new EV. And remember, Ford Lightning's an EV and it cost them $60,000. They basically scrapped the vehicle. Check it out, you're gonna love it. Hope to see each and every one in the next one. We'll see you real soon, bye-bye.